Hey, and hello to the third part of our little project of soldering the DSO-138 oscilloscope. We don't have that much left. Um, mainly we will solder the power connector, the pin headers and uh, switches, as well as the BNC connector for the actual probes. And then there are a few more things um, to test uh, for testing purposes, a little jumper and also the LCD board. After that we have to test and verify everything that everything's fine and then we can try to use this thing. Hopefully, if we haven't made any major mistakes. So, um, let's see what we got here, the last few parts. So there's not that much left. Here are the pin headers, also for the little LCD that we still have lying around somewhere. This is a tiny little 2.5 inch LCD. And yeah, so here are some switches, the plastic spacers, put them to the side for now. BNC connector and some more pin headers. Good, so first up will be the power connector and then the pin headers. So let's get started. Okay, so my camera flunked out, but we quickly soldered the pin headers, the power socket and the uh, BNC connector as well as the three switches. Nothing of this was really tricky. A little bit of um, tape helped to help hold all these things in place so that they don't fall out while soldering the first pins. Um, I also soldered in this teeny tiny little loop here. Let's see if we can focus on this up here. There's a tiny test loop which gives you one kilohertz test signal. And um, furthermore, um, next to this uh, voltage regulator, there's a. Let's see if we can focus again. Yeah. Uh, there's a little jumper JP3 which we have to short with uh, solder. Other than that, we only have to solder the pin header to the LCD board and then we are more or less ready to go. And we have to check some voltages then and see if everything's connected the right way. Okay, let's try it. Well, hello, and finally we have got together all the parts for our DSO-138 oscilloscope. The board is finally completely soldered, and also the daughter board with the LCD is fine. We will uh, fire this up in a moment. You should make sure that you have a proper 9 volt power supply here with uh, the round connector positive in the lead. We'll check this if it's the correct one using our meter here. Positive should be in the middle and ground on the outside. And yes, it reads 9.3 volts. That seems pretty okay. So positive is in the middle. I would assume that you probably have some polarity protection on the board itself probably the diode here, um, but I wouldn't want to bet on this. Um, what do you need to know about the 
assembly here right now. Well, the hardest part in soldering was probably the BNC connector, um, because it has some very large pins here, which need a lot of heat to solder correctly, and I didn't do it correctly in the first try, but a friend helped me. It was very useful, and uh, now it's fine. Uh, you also have all these switches here that I'll come to in a second, and of course the daughter board with a couple of jumpers here and the pin connectors here. And we just put this together like this. You can't really put it in the wrong way, just make sure not to bend any pins on the connectors, and not to squish too hard on the LCD display itself. Okay, um, there's also the BNC cable with the clips here at the end. This comes right here on the BNC connector. It's also pretty important that you soldered it correctly, otherwise it will easily break off. In a future episode I will also show you a nice 3D printed case for this uh, oscilloscope. But uh, this is not quite finished yet, so uh, we will see that in a later part. Okay, so now all we need to do is actually put in the power and hopefully everything works. Screen sliding up, that's pretty nice. Also some boot messages. Yeah, do not help the thief report fake kit sellers, that's nice. Okay, so oscilloscope is running. We've got a couple of switches here. First the coupling switch, which is the coupling mode could be ground, AC or DC. You usually want to have probably AC if you're um, like measuring audio signals or uh, something like that, so that the signal is nicely centered around the zero line basically. And um, there's two sensitivity switches, one for the millivolts, 10 millivolts, 100 millivolts and one volt. Um, which is then the scale of this vertical axis and also some um, scaling factor 1, 2 or 5. For testing purposes there's a little loop here soldered onto the board which gives you a rectangle wave of 1 kilohertz and you basically just need to attach the red clip to this thing and you see that it's working but it looks a bit weird so we go to the 1 volt setting and that's much nicer. Down here you see the time frame that it's currently sampling at, which is one millisecond. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see it a bit better and get the whole thing a bit more into shot. Okay, you have uh, plus and minus buttons here, as well as selection button and OK button, where how you can uh, where you can switch around all the settings here. And for example, now I'm currently at the time setting, so with plus I can zoom in. So 0.1 milliseconds shows us this. With the OK button, if I hold this for a couple of seconds, I will see the frequency in an overlay and uh, Vmax, Vmin and other statistics as well. This is pretty useful, but if you don't want to see that, you just hold it for a couple of seconds. The OK button also switches between hold and running and uh, the hold mode is pretty useful if you don't need the continuous display but you want to have some auto trigger uh, which we come to later but right now we want to see this here. The two little um, adjustable capacitors here uh, are used to actually make the signal be correct so you first need to calibrate by using this clip here and then tuning these two um, knobs until you get a nice rectangular line. But that's also explained in more detail in the leaflet that you get with the kit. So I'll skip this right now. Okay, this is pretty nice so far. You can zoom in, zoom out, you can choose uh, where to center the, the waveform on the ascending edge, or the leading edge, or the trailing edge, um, which doesn't make much of a difference here, but a little bit of difference here of course, because we shift the whole display by a phase basically, going from the leading edge to the falling edge. 
and you can also set quite a few display options here which I again will skip through you can zoom in and zoom out a little bit more shift around in the signal etc etc um, I also won't show it for this test setup I won't show the auto trigger function um, but it's nice for different circuits for example for the blinking circuit that we did in an earlier episode and we'll take a look at that later a much more interesting experiment now would be to attach some signal source so let me zoom out a bit again and we will take this little nice monotron synthesizer it makes beeping noises as you would expect and you can do all kinds of modulations here um, at another oscill oscillator modulate the first oscillator with the second oscillator and you have some high and low pass filters that you can tune very interesting to use as a toy and make some nice little tunes with it but even better if you're actually able to see the signal and due to a lack of good mixers or anything like that I will show you how to make this actually work without you having to hear annoying synth sounds <clears throat> so we basically just do the visual examination so first of all we tune the monotron to one oscillator no influence for the second oscillator high and low pass filters are set to max and min respectively and so if I press one key now we should get something uh, we are not getting anything here okay debug time we're plugged in we have in theory a signal but we need to go down to the 10 millivolt setting yeah that looks better that looks much better and we need to zoom out a bit yeah this looks much better so what we can see here is that uh, synth basically has a mixed waveform a uh, square wave mixed in with a bit of a sawtooth pattern and by sliding over the keyboard I can produce different frequencies also by turning the knob for the first oscillator I can tune to different frequencies and the second thing I can do is I can actually plug in the second oscillator which is added to the first oscillator so we see little square waves on top of the larger square wave and I can tune the frequency of those as well okay let's turn this off again and the next thing would be the uh, low pass filter which is controlled by this cutoff knob and when I turn this down you will see that the square wave gets smoothed out and also loses a lot of energy so this makes a funny noise you can just check it basically what it sounds okay turn the volume down a bit good and the second knob that we have for the filters is the peak which is basically a high pass filter which emphasizes high frequencies and it will lead to some ringing artifacts that you can see here let's zoom in a bit and also turn down the frequency a bit and as soon as, as I start to put this into overdrive it will massively distort the signal and the oscilloscope will go all crazy also the sound will not be very nice but allows you to do some nice sound effects okay so basically if you've got a mixer you could put this into a mixer and uh, feed one thing into the oscilloscope and the other into your computer for recording and have some nice visual feedback of the actual waveforms that you're doing one last thing that you can do with a little monotron here is to use the second oscillator to influence the first oscillator and vary its frequency. You see this when I turn up the 
intensity of the second oscillator, this will start to jiggle. Basically it will change its frequency. And the higher I turn it up, the more prominent this effect will get. I will zoom out a bit and you see the waveform pattern jumping around quite a bit. Yeah, so that's that. Quite a nice little tool and um, yeah, I will pause for a second and try to find our blinking light and see what we can do with this and this oscilloscope. Okay, this took me a few minutes but I think I've got it running. It's actually pretty hard to attach the clips to the PCB, but what you're seeing here now is the signal that I get from attaching the positive clip to the positive side of one of the capacitors. So basically you see the charging curve of the capacitor, um, yeah, which is basically pretty round and then a sharp fall off when the capacitor discharges. And yeah, actually I wanted to show you how the auto trigger function works, um, or the single shot trigger function works, which should be able to show you one of those charge cycles. But since this is a flip-flop and it's running continuously, this doesn't actually make quite sense. Should have thought of that before. Um, anyway, this is pretty neat if you want to analyze any circuit that you build or that you want to reverse engineer and you can attach the probes anywhere on the board if you have enough of the leads left or otherwise you probably have to solder something or put your finger to this but actually when I touch this I will probably lose the connection so I better not do that so that's a bit of a tricky part on this there are also other adapter cables available with different probes like the pointy probes that you also get with the multimeter and different some other probes probably and you can solder your own stuff onto a BNC connector anyway. Yeah, so that's about it. Um, I will give you a follow-up episode about the printed 3D case and how that works out. But this will be in a future episode. So I thank you for watching. I hope you like this and as always uh, share, like and subscribe if you want and otherwise see you next time and thanks for watching.